Isaiah reminds us, reminding Israel, he reminds us too that no matter what we're going through, when circumstances seem hopeless, God is always there offering hope, help, and hope. And to get into the lesson, he says, But now says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed your Israel, says, Don't be afraid. I redeem you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. He said, when you go through deep waters, I'll be with you. When you go through rivers, you will not be not dry. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned up. The, the flames will not consume you. And he goes on and tells him, for I am the Lord your God, your Savior. I'm the Holy One of Israel. said, I gave Egypt, Ethiopia, and Sea as a ransom for your freedom. Others died that you might live. He said, I, I traded your lives, their lives, for yours because you are precious to me and honor and I love you. He said, <clears throat> he said, I have, I have witness for Israel, say the Lord. So you are my, you're going to be my woman. And you're my servant. Told them to know and to believe me. And to understand what I alone, that I alone am God. He said, there is no other God that never was and that never will be. So you don't have to worry about that. And then he said, that I'm the Lord and there is no other Savior. Whatever you have thrown away, you are. I've shown you my power. With, with one word, I have saved you. You have seen me to do it. You are my witness that it is true. And as we look at the lesson, it talks about a, <clears throat> a new thing, a new day. Uh, the prophet <clears throat> began by declaring a new day and a different time. And he's telling the community not to focus only on the condition of exile, but see the way that God's presence and power can make a difference. And they can see the Lord hand, see the hand of God at work among them. He said, you're in exile. I know you're out there. And, and we understand that how you must feel. But don't focus on where you are. Because God got something better for you. And he said, you know, the words of the prophets were meant for the end time nation in the next time. Israel was in exile in Babylon, and they had been there so long, things had just been kind of rough. They, they, they just didn't have a whole lot of hope for anything any better. And he says, uh, <clears throat> they told him, said, uh, uh, I said, the prophet said, y'all don't, I, I know you're in there. I know you're in exile. I know how hard it must be. So, but don't. Don't be that way. Don't worry about all that because of you start to thinking about how God has blessed you in the past. Just think about he was telling us to just think about how many times he came around whenever you was in trouble. Just think how he came to your rescue. Just in time. So so don't don't focus on because you're not gonna be in captivity all the time. You're gonna go back to the homeland. But that's going to be the day that God decides. But don't worry about that. And, and, and he, the prophet, when he says that he connects the new day that God is creating, even while they're in exile, he, he connecting that to God's past acts on Israel's behalf. And he's telling them, you look back, you look back and see what he's done for you. And you know what he can still do for you. And he said, uh, he took about your deliverance from Egyptian bondage. Mm. And then he said, uh, when God delivered Israel from Egypt, he did so at a time when Israel was in crisis. And they had no expectation of change in their condition. They'd been in it. They just didn't, you know, they, they just didn't feel like it was going to get no better no time soon. But God raised up a deliverer and a leader in Moses. And Moses not only led him out of bondage, but he had to give birth to the nation. 
So the prophet is telling you, look at some, hey, look, look at your past and see. And, and uh, we can look at our past and see some things, how God has brought us to where we are now. And then when we feel down and out, we can look back and say, oh, okay, I remember when this was wrong. I remember when that was going on and how God took, brought us out, how God helped me. God brought me through that. So I, I can I can say, I can hold on a little while longer because I've, I've seen his work and I'm a witness for his work. And, and he took, now he took Israel. Israel was a group of disconnected tribes. And he took them from, from that to a full nation with an identity as part of his work of creation. He gave them a new name. Gave them a name. They were nothing before. All these disconnected tribes here and there. God made a poor nation out of them with an identity. And God informed them that they would have trials and struggles, but he promised to be with the nation. And he will sustain and keep them no matter what comes their way. He told them, he said, I'm the one who got you started. You are mine. You don't have to be afraid. No matter what goes on, I'm going to be there with you. So when I'm with you, you don't have to be afraid. And as long as I'm with you, you're going to succeed. You're coming out better than you were before. He said, he told me, he said, now, don't worry about that. When you are in over your head, I'll be there with you. When you are in rough waters, <clears throat> You will not go down. Then when when you're between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. I pay a huge price for y'all. And all you have to do is just continue to look up to me. And as we look at some of we get Christ's redemption work in Israel. It started with God's selection of Israel to be the nation he chose of his own. And he and the, the point is that you know there's nothing that can happen to the nation that will change God's selection of people as His own, and that meant that the nation has continued access to the power of God, and and God may use His power at any moment to change the condition, just like He may use it at any moment to change our condition. And God offers hope to those in bondage. And the community is called on to focus upon the hope that hope includes the presence of God in, in life, in life's difficult moments. The peace of God to grant security in uncertainty. And the promise of God for coming deliverance. And you look at it, you think about <clears throat> How, how things were at one point. And then God bring you through. And you say, well, now if he brought me through, then, and he's saying, God, he can bring me through again. But you got this trust and believe in him. And you got to serve him. And, and God declares that his presence among the people, he declares his presence among the people. He said, <clears throat> by informing the people, said, you're a witness to me. His power, you're a witness to his power and his presence. This was a call to remember ways that God has shown the power and presence in the past. <clears throat> and, and the prophet was telling me, Isaac was telling me, like, oh, you know, you got something that you can think of so because you remember how he brought you out before. So, so you remember how it was? And the, the, uh, <clears throat> The Red Sea was in front of you, and Israel, and you were, the enemy was behind you. The, the prophet said, to, told everything, you know, there's no other power or any other God that was able to do what God did for Israel. So when Israel, when their enemies were behind them and the Red Sea was in front of them, Israel had no place to turn. They didn't have an army to fight for them. <clears throat> But God delivered them and destroyed their enemies. And that's what he'll do for us. We get so many times we get in hard places. We get, we get in a rut. We don't know which way to turn sometimes. 
But when you think about it, you can reflect on it. I've been in trouble before. I've been this way before. But look, God delivered me. And, and when you think about that, <clears throat> it gives you hope to go on. And, and, and it gives you, you don't have to worry about worshiping the Isle of God because they, they don't have any power. They can't do anything for you. You see, that was one of the problems with Israel. Everywhere they went, it wasn't long before they were worshiping the God of the people that had captured them. Wherever they went, they stay a little while. Next thing you know, they start to worship in the God that the people around them worship. <clears throat> and they had to be reminded from time to time about some things. And, and uh, <clears throat> some things that, that they, they should have known. When, when God delivered them, nobody, no, nobody else could ever deliver them like God did at the Red Sea. No, nobody could do this. All the gods that the other nations had, all the gods they worship, uh uh, they, they couldn't do nothing because the true and living God, the only one that had the power to deliver them from their enemy. And just like God loved Israel, God chose Israel and he loved Israel, <clears throat> but he also loved them. He loved us so much, he sent his son to die for us. And we face many trials and tribulations in this life. But James, in the book of James 1 and 2, it says, Whenever you face this trial, cut it all joy. Because God has guaranteed, we make it, guaranteed, we're going to make it through. And come out better equipped than before. And so, <clears throat> as we look at, at, look at our lesson, God is, God told Isaiah to tell the people, fear not. He's telling us to fear not. That's a lot in this world we can fear. But he's saying that when you get in trouble, I'm going to be there. He said, I'm going to be with you, period. I'm going to be with you always. And, and there's some things that you got to do to make sure that you are on the right path. You can't just worship these out of God and do, what need, do all kinds of things. And then they expect me to come in and do, I can't come in that mess. You have to come to me. You have to, you have to turn your focus on me. I am the God. You have to worship me. You have to remember there will be no other God uh, before me. <clears throat> no other God after me. It, it's just me. It's, I, I'm it. I'm it. And you need to know that. And, and I, from time to time, we, the God says that we've been through all this before. We've been through over and over. And you have not learned. But you need to learn so that you can be a witness to the nation. He said, no. Uh, he said, you know, whenever, whenever we live, remember the faithfulness of God, how God has been. You know, when we think about the faithfulness of God, it empowers us to say whatever before us with courage and conviction that cause we know the Lord will make the way somehow. <clears throat> and and sometimes we we just we're just going through a lot of things. God understands and but the thing about it is he, he says, I'm with you. I'm still here. And if I'm still here, you ain't got nothing to worry about because whatever you go through, I'm gonna be right there. So that means if I'm going to be with you, you're not going to fail. So, but one thing you need to do, and you see, <laughs> God says, all these people that uh, every time Israel, the biggest problem with Israel was that they they would fall in line with these idols wherever they go. And God is telling them, you don't need them. All you need is me. <laughs> so, you know, <clears throat> he said, now, in this situation, he told uh, Isaiah, to tell the priest, he said, you know, I know you're in captivity, but you're not going to get off the hospital. He said, you will endure some things, and you'll be a witness to other nations. Other nations will look at you and say, oh my, they are blessed. Boy, they are blessed. They're going to be witnesses of God to all these nations. 
But right now, they can't see it. And I understand that they can't see it because they've been in captivity. They're away from their homeland. They've been in exile. It sounds like, I don't think there'll be no change. But God is telling them, I'm with you. I'll be with you always. And you're going to say, he said, now, your biggest problem is that you got, you know, I said you can have no other God before me. I'm a jealous God. But you turn right around and have one. And, and he said, what you need is a good dose of Second Corinthians 7 and 14, where he said, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, he said, then will I hit from heaven. And, and you know, God has a time that he's going to do what he's going to do. And, and since we don't know, we say we need to stay in touch with God at all times. And, and whenever we're down and look like nothing is going right, we can turn around and we can look at, mm, look how he did that. And look how he did that. And, and he did this for me. So, I, I, you know, if God did it for me one time and God is still here, God can do it for me again. And, and you know, we sing this song like, he brought me through this and he brought me through that and he said, Lord, I'm grateful. So yet we go back and repeat the same thing over and over again. We need, <clears throat> God is telling us now, you know, time is out for this stuff that you do. It's time. If you want to come and, and, and I love you, you're my, I've chosen you as my own people, but, you, but I got some work to do in you. Just like he has some work to do in us. He has chosen, chosen us. Those were his people. He chose them as a nation. But he loved us because he sent his own son to die on the cross for us. So we're special to God too. And this lesson he's telling, um, that, that Israel, he's telling us, he said, now y'all, you know, um, I love you and all, but you can't go on the way you're going. I want you to be a witness to the nation, but you can't be just like you are. You can't be seesawing and being a witness to the nation. No. When I get through, he said, you're not getting off stop free. Now, I couldn't, I couldn't deliver you like I've been doing for the Red Sea and other things, but I'm not going to do it this way. This time, it's going to be different. You're going to come out to a new day at a new time. He said, but what you're going to do this time, we're going to, <clears throat> you're going to learn what it's like to serve the true God. You're going to learn what it's like to persevere. And sometimes it can, things can be kind of rough. Because, you know, sometimes we can, we make commitment to God and, and we plan to be consistent. After a while, if we hadn't seen our answer to our prayer, we have a tendency to kind of say, slack off a little bit. You don't continue, you don't, you don't continue petitioning God and asking God to do this, to do that. You say, well, I guess I ain't going to get the answer to it or whatever. But God comes to, he comes to answer his children's prayer. And, and if we don't see the God soon, that doesn't mean it's not coming. He works everything according to his purpose. And, and you know, we have limited human understanding, and we don't always know whether our petition fit into God's plan, or do we fit into God's time thing. All we know we ask. But whether he grants our request or not, we can be certain that his way and his time are bigger and for our good. And God, sometimes he may hold off and give us a chance to get straightened out, just like he's going to Israel. He could have delivered them out of eight hours. He could have brought them back to their homeland in a little while, but he chose not to do it. Because if he'd done that, they would have probably went right back to where they were before. So he, he teaching them through their, through their hardship. He's teaching them to, to, to trust him. He's teaching them to, to realize that just because you're going through a lot of trials and tribulations, that does not mean I'm not with you. I see it all, I know it all, and I can do it all.
He said, so just because you're going through trial doesn't mean that you're not loved. He said, but I want you to be a witness for me. You are my special people. I have chosen you, and you're going to be a, a witness to all the nations around you. You're going to be my witness. They're going to look at you and see what God has done for you. And he says to <clears throat> he says to all of us, them as well as us, I've got work for you to do. There is something you need to do. You need to straighten out some things. That's why you're going to stay there where you are until things get straightened out. When you realize it's all about me and not about anybody else, then, you know, you can start getting things in the right order. Because that's what it's going to take. And he says, uh, <clears throat> he, he talks to people in captivity. They, they have been in captivity so long that they have lost hope. And we can identify with it. Because like I said, sometimes some things, situations we're burdened with, sometimes we had it for a long time. We about to get a give up hope. So, well, maybe, maybe I ain't supposed to have this. Maybe God don't want it this way. And all that kind of stuff. You, you just don't know. But the thing about it is, you get on one accord with God. And, and you and you do what Second Corinthians 7 and 14 told you to do. That's what, that's what he was telling the nations they need to do. And that's what we need to do also. We need to make sure that we're on one accord with God. Because unless we are, we just keep repeating the same mistakes over and over again. And the biggest thing with Israel, as I said, they would be fine for a little while. Then they would let on whatever God people were worshiping in that region. That, that's, the, that's the God that they would worship. And it's not that they didn't know that. Sometimes being in captivity would cause you to compromise, and, and they may have to do that. But the thing about it is, they were not the true God. They had a God that had power. The, the God, those gods, they couldn't do anything for you. They had no power. They couldn't speak for you. They couldn't speak to you. So you wonder why Israel just repeated over and over and over again. That was one thing that they couldn't seem to shake. And that was the one thing God didn't like. He said, I'm a jealous God. Thou will have no other God before me. But yet Israel would do it. And we are like Israel in many ways. We may not worship a wooden God, but there may be somebody else, something else in our lives that we worship more than what we do God. Maybe we don't study his word. Maybe we watch TV when we ought to be in the word. Maybe we um play games or do whatever. But anything but staying in the word. And then when situations come up, sometimes we don't always know what to do. Sometimes we just, we just stand still and call on the Lord. But he's got it laid out here in, in his, in his holy word. He got all these instructions laid out. We won't know about them if we don't read about them. If we don't study his word, we won't know anything. And we need to know, and we need to know for ourselves. You just don't trust whatever you hear out here because you, you, you test it with the word of God. See what the Bible says about it. And then you got something to go on. God wants us to persevere. He wants to push through. He wants us to keep the faith. He wants to stay the course and just keep pushing because he's been told us now, I'm going to be with you. Nothing can happen to you that, that I can't fix. He says, uh, Oh, you got to do this thing with me. And, and even though we, we, sometimes we're burning so long, we, we drop that to get the hope. But we got to remember who's in charge and, and focus on him. God does not want us to focus on how big our father is, but he wants us to focus on how big our God is. And he's the one that con controls everything. <clears throat> Israel and us today, we can both benefit from that second chronicle. And we go back and get that straight, and perhaps it can help us get back on track. And we, we remember that we are the witness for God. People look at us, 
we are the church. And this one, God wanted Israel to be such a witness to him. that when people saw them, they said, oh, my, look at them. I remember when they were down and out. I remember when they were in captivity. But look at them now. Wow. Look what God has done. If he done it for them, maybe he'll do it for us too. All we have to do is just trust him. And besides, what else can he do? He's the only true and living God. He's the only one that knows God. He's the only one that can answer a prayer. So why wouldn't we, why wouldn't we just, just go ahead on and trust him? We would be so wise, foolish not to trust him. That's the God that we need. That's the one that we want to trust. And you know, whenever we can turn our, our focus away from our condition alone, and we can we can stop focusing so much on our condition and focus on the one who can change our condition. And think about, I know what he did last time. I know what he can do now. And, and we remember the things in our past. And, you know, that puts us, we remember our past. Remember what God has done for us in the past. And we know God is still with us. So we don't have nothing to worry about. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be, we don't have to worry about this. And God is taking care of things that's going to happen to us in the future. He's already got it taken care of. And, and when we think about, uh, we reflect on what God has done for us in the past. And, and, and we are, and, 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 and are in a position. When we reflect on what God has done for us in the past, okay, well, I don't have to worry about that. That put us in a position to experience a new day in a different time. And we we have to see. We have to remember, first of all, the message that fit not. God got it all taken care of. And, and uh, you know, if you trust him, he knows what to do because he can look ahead. He's looking ahead to see what, what path we're taking. And he can be there to help us cross whatever we need to do. And, and this is what he said, uh, Isaiah was telling the, the Israelites, y'all ain't got nothing to fear because nothing can happen to you that God can fix. And then God can prevent certain things from happening to you anyway. So he tells us that all you got to do is keep the faith. You, you stay, stay the course. I know it gets rough. Captivity and exile got to be bad. You in captivity in a in a strange land. You you you've been removed. You've been forcefully removed from your home. You've been uh, and brought over here to work to do what these people said you. But it happened because first of all, you 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 left the true God. You stopped serving God like you should. So this is why some of this stuff is happening. So what uh, Isaiah would tell them that you get back on track. And I know it's rough, but I want you to keep the faith because God is going to change some things. Some things are getting ready to change, but it's going to be God's will in God's time. He said, so you remember that <clears throat> but and no matter what happens, you don't have to be afraid of the moment. You just keep looking up to the hill because that's where it comes in your head. Are there any comments? Are there, are there any comments? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I just want to thank God for you this morning. Thank God for that awesome lesson you teaching this morning. And like you said, God, it was no God from from the beginning, and no God, no God after God. And what God is telling us, we are His witness. And we need to uh, get our house. He's telling us we need to get our house in order mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and follow him. Not other things, but follow the true God and the real God. Yes. Because he said, I am the beginning and I will be the end. And no other God before me 
So he telling us we need to get ourselves in order and do the right thing, put self out of it, and put him in everything. Yes, yes. Are there any other comments? And we also read this morning of uh, trusting you that no matter what the, what's going on, God is still in control, and all we got to do is trust in Him. He'll make everything all right. Amen. 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 This morning we talk very well about you. Thank you. Thank you. And He also says, "If we ask not, we have not." So we yes, got right. to ask. That's right. And we got to live so that we can receive it. That's right. And I learned uh, from your lesson, Sister Nancy, that God already got the answer to the problem. We just need to be obedient because he did the sacrifice of his son so that we can be saved. We just need to be obedient and go and do what he will have us to do. That's right. You know, we, we line, once we line up with what he wants to do, then we don't worry about nothing else until we got it. That's right, that's right. Are, are there any other comments? I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. <laughs> I, I thank all of you for your comments, and uh, we're all learning something together. Amen. If there aren't any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson. Well, thank you this morning, Trustee Wood, for that good lesson this morning. Uh, <clears throat> I'd just like to ask that uh, anyone on a church uh, come uh, that what they learned that I've been listening this morning. I learned, I learned that God be with you wherever you go, as long as you do the right thing and obey his, his commandment. Amen. Amen. Does uh, anyone else have a, a comment you want to make? What to learn from this lesson? I, I'd just like to say that, uh, I, Come to the conclusion that God uh, want His uh, Christian people to uh, not to fear, then have faith in Him. Whatever we shall do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Now, now we are turning over to our secretary this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Minutes for St. Stephen's and Anderson Chapel Sunday Church School on January 8th, 2023. Sunday School was called to order at 10 o'clock by Deacon Vick. Opening song was Blessed Assurance by Mother Barnes. Prayer was given by Reverend Faison. The lesson topic was Fear Not. Background passage, Isaiah 43, 1 through 23. The key verse, but, but now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. Isaiah 43 and 1. The lesson was reviewed for 30 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Remarks were given by a representative from the class. Attendance is 15 in-house, 11 online for a total of 26. The weather is cold. Sitting Secretary, Lower Source. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Uh, Lewis, for the minutes this morning. I'll be any information on the minutes this morning. If not, we will receive the minutes that have been read this morning. Thank you again, Mother Lewis. Now we'll turn it over to Pastor Lewis.